Graduation season is upon us, and we have a fresh batch of newly minted graduates. Today we're going to talk about what your graduate needs to know to make sure that they're in the best financial condition possible. So what is Wealth Mass tools and advice that can help you maximize your wealth? She's getting paid for what she knows and not what she does. To work less and play more. To maximize the wealth for my clients. Your retirement plan. Let's go, Uncle Money. May and June are an exciting time for a lot of people. It's because that this is a time where there's a lot of graduates. A lot of people graduating from high school and then college. And it's an exciting time because it marks a significant marker in your graduate's life. They've sacrificed a lot to reach this point, and I'm sure you're very proud of them. But today we're going to talk about a financial checklist for your new graduate. Things that your graduate may need to think about when concerning their finances because they have reached this marker in their life. I hope you look and listen to the rest of this list because I believe that this list will help your new graduate reach that next level in their financial future. The first skill set I want to talk about is budgeting. And I know nobody wants to hear the term, but I know individuals that are in their late 40s who truly don't understand what they spend their money on. So if you're able to teach your new graduate the skill set of budgeting, I think they'll be in a better situation. And there's three main things I want them to think about when they talk about budgeting. The first thing I want them to think about is really understanding their income. A lot of people can quote how much they make on an hourly basis or how much they bring home per pay period. But what does that equate to on a monthly basis or even a full year basis? Really understand what is your total income, including other compensation items such as health insurance and 401k contributions. I recommend that they review this at least on a quarterly basis, mostly to make sure that they're maximizing the amount of value or the amount of income that they can make. They need to compare based on the skill sets, the education I have, is this the highest amount of income that I can truly make? When I worked in corporate America, we spent months, I mean multiple months, planning and estimating what type of revenues that we bring in. And even after that, on a monthly basis, we would check to make sure based what we budgeted was actually coming to fruition. And after that, reforecasting what could come in the future. We should also take that same approach when it comes to budgeting. We need to estimate and understand how much income's going in. A lot of people understand how much they make on an hourly basis or how much they bring in per paycheck. But how much does that equate to on a monthly basis? How much does that equate to on a yearly basis? And how do different factors affect our income, whether we work a couple hours longer or that we have taxes taken in and out and really understanding how much we're paying in taxes to reduce our tax bill. Estimating your income is important and it's a key factor in budgeting. The top line on every budget starts with income. The second thing I want your new graduate to consider is what are they actually spending their money on? This can be more complicated than it sounds. We have so many different obligations that we're paying for. We're paying for things like Netflix accounts, Amazon Prime, rent, um, eating out, all these different expenses. So keeping track of these are so important. What I recommend is sit down on, with a sheet of paper or with an Excel spreadsheet and list out your expected expenses on any given month. This is what you call a budget. But the budget is not good enough. What you need to do is reconcile what you spent versus what you budgeted. That reconciliation will teach you a lot about your spending habits, what you want or what you don't want out of life, and what you truly prioritize. If you look at what you spent and it doesn't line up with what you feel like you hope or desire and dream, that's where you can make an adjustment. It's that monthly process that allows an individual to improve on their financial situation. Living on less than what you make. There's a saying that says that rich people live poor, poor people live rich. I really believe that the true happiness is found in the little things. So really finding activities, hobbies, things that you enjoy that don't cost a lot can contribute significantly to your new graduate's happiness. Really understand what's going on in your community because many municipalities, governments, whether that's county, state, put on a lot of events for the community. These could be places where you can meet neighbors and get out the house. The idea of going to that nice fancy restaurant sounds nice. It sounds like a brilliant idea. 
But think about the hole in your pocket that that new restaurant will put in when you could have done something that's more enjoyable and connect with people better, whether that's going over somebody's house and doing a potluck dinner or just having a movie night. So many different options that you can enjoy life without spending a lot of money. And being strategic about these things, that's where the magic happens. That's when you're able to make financial strides and save an extra dollar. So budgeting was the first thing, and probably one of the most important things on my checklist. The second thing is steering clear of debt and also managing the debt that you've already incurred. I've seen far too often as a financial advisor where debt has really derailed somebody's life. And it actually stops you from achieving the goals that you may want to happen, whether that's getting married, starting a family, taking on a new business venture, or even taking risk of taking a job or moving into a different location. Debt stifles an individual's ability to truly enjoy life. It also increases the stress. So one of the key things in the second part of my checklist is make sure that your graduate is reducing the amount of debt that they use, but also managing the debt that they have. When we talk about managing the debt that we have, we really have to talk about reviewing your credit report. A lot of people really don't know who they owe, how much they owe, and how far back it was ago. And that's a big issue. So the first thing that I recommend is, as soon as your graduate graduates, pull their credit report, even if they feel like they don't have any obligations at all. This way you can review it and make sure that your graduate is starting off on a clean slate. The second thing is, this credit report will show you which credit cards you may have delinquent that you may have forgot about, and also what errors that your credit agencies are reporting. Credit rating agencies are not perfect, just like we're not perfect. So making sure that your credit actually reflects your spending habits and what you've actually occurred via debt is important. When we talk about managing our debt, what we're also talking about is preventing people from stealing your identity. Your graduate has recently graduated from high school um, and also college. Now, the, similarly, both of these institutions probably has your graduate social security number and they don't have the money to invest like a Home Depot or IBM on security to secure information for your graduate. So it is upon you to make sure that information is secure. The best way to make sure that your graduate identity is not stolen is to get a credit freeze. Make sure you obtain a credit freeze for your graduate, especially if they're not going to incur any more debt in the future. When we talk about managing our debt, we're also talking about student loans. Student loans has become an epidemic in our nation and something that really needs governmental uh, assistance and attention to. But while we're waiting for the government to help us out with these student loan debts, a lot of people have become, become prey to poor student loan practices of giving out too much debt um, to degrees that really don't earn enough given the amount of debt that they've taken out. So I recommend all graduates first understand how much debt they have to take out in the future. How much debt have they incurred so far? And also, how much debt and how soon they are going to pay off those liabilities. This information will put your graduate on a course to receive financial freedom to help them manage their debt. The third part in our checklist is start investing as early as possible. Albert Einstein once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And the most powerful part of compound interest is time. Time is the biggest asset for your new graduates. Make sure that they begin investing as soon as possible to make sure in their latter years, when they're retired, that they have a nice essay, nest egg, not only to make sure they live a good life, that they can pass down to the next generation. When we talk about investing early, the first thing anybody should invest in is themselves. And part of investing in yourself is really thinking about putting away enough money for an emergency fund. Now, emergency fund usually equals the three to six months worth of living expenses. This way, your graduate will have the financial security just in case they may experience a temporary layoff or they want to invest in something that's really big that makes their heart's desire go. So the first thing that your new graduate should invest in is an emergency fund. When we talk about investing early, investing early is the perfect time to open up a Roth IRA. When you're a new graduate, you're probably at the beginning stages of your income potential. 
And because you're at the beginning stages of your income potential, your tax life bracket is pretty low relative to what is going to be in the future. This is why investing in a Roth IRA can be so beneficial. First, you're going to pay little tax on your money. And the money that you invest is going to grow tax-free. This is a big deal and a big asset when it comes to retirement planning. So I recommend, if your new graduate is working, that they invest in a Roth IRA. When we talk about investing early, it's really contributing into all the different ways you can grow your money. And one of the key plan ways to grow your money is to participate in your employer's retirement plan. Most of the individuals that I work with who have amassed a certain amount of wealth, it usually came down to somebody walking up to them and describing, hey, um, I really think you should invest in this account. Now, the individuals that was investing really didn't know what was going on, but over time, this amount has compounded over and over again, and now they have a sizable amount of money. So what I recommend is that if you have a new graduate in your life and their employer is offering a, a, a 401k type plan, definitely encourage them to participate. That way you can be that individual that gives them financial freedom in the future. The fourth point on our list is make sure you continue to learn. Like any skill, whether you're playing a sport, where you're learning a new hobby, or even just trying to become more proficient at your profession. It takes time, it takes patience and dedication and financial literacy is not different. Make sure you try your best to stay up to date on the financial knowings, whether that's reading financial books or just reading the Wall Street Journal, just regularly consuming financial information over time will make strides on your financial trajectory. So if your new graduate is a do-it-yourselfer, which means they're gonna manage their own assets, or they seek the help of a financial planner, Either way, knowing the basics of financial literacy will allow them to make strides in their financial future. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like videos like this, please click the link below. If you want more, more and more videos like this or you want different topics, please put a comment down below and I'll make sure that I can try my best to create a video specifically tailored to your topic. Hope you enjoyed this. My name is Randall Avery, owner of RSA Diesel Advisors and as always, invest in your dreams. to invest in my future.